Hey, and welcome to Pick Your Poison. Today I'm breaking down the three main artificial sweeteners that you probably know of. Since I know that more than likely you're gonna use one either way, whether I tell you to or not, I might as well at least lay out the science and lay out which one is best and which one is worse. But a little secret, they're all worse. But anyway, let's break down the ones I'm gonna talk about real quick. I'm gonna talk about aspartame or aspartame, depending on how you wanna say it. Those are typically the blue packets, like the NutraSweet or the Equal. Okay, then I'm gonna talk about Splenda or Sucralose, it's usually the yellow packets. Then I'm gonna talk about Saccharin, which is the pink packets, sweet and low. I honestly don't really know who's using those anymore. I mean, my grandpa used them, but apparently some people are still using them because they're still popping up at restaurants and they're in Denny's across the country. So anyway, let's talk about the science, let's talk about the breakdowns. First, I'm gonna start with aspartame. It's made up of three things, and I'm gonna break it down in just a second, but first off, it was approved by the FDA in 1981. So it's one of the older ones, it's been around for a while. But the breakdown is pretty interesting, okay? The main thing that it has in it is something known as phenylalanine. And phenylalanine is an amino acid that's occurring naturally in the brain. It's really not that bad of a thing. But when we have a ton of it, it's very, very bad. There's even a medical condition, a genetic disorder, known as PKU. Now, PKU is an overabundance of phenylalanine because of the body's inability to process it. So you end up having too much phenylalanine, which ends up poisoning the brain. Well, if you add too much phenylalanine to someone that doesn't have PKU, you end up triggering a really bad response. In fact, studies have even shown that aspartame is linked to depression, linked to memory issues, and linked to other cognitive issues just by itself. But when you factor in the exposure to excess amounts of phenylalanine, well, you can trigger the absolute reduction and sometimes even get rid of entirely serotonin production. That can lead you feeling extremely, extremely depressed. And unfortunately, it can be something that takes a long time to aggregate in your body. So you may start feeling chronically depressed over an extended period of time if you're someone that's drinking a lot of diet sodas. Okay, now let's move into the next ingredient. That's aspartic acid. Now, aspartic acid is something that is called an excitatory component, okay? Excitatory things excite neurons to death. The way that they do this is they stimulate the neurons so much by allowing a lot of calcium in that it creates a series of free radicals that ultimately kill off the cell. They kill off the neuron. So if you want a quick way to go kill some brain cells outside of sucking in some helium, it might not be a bad idea to suck down some aspartame packets. Okay, now let's talk about the next ingredient, and that's methanol. All right, methanol, that's straight up poison, flat out, like the FDA even calls it a poison. It converts to formaldehyde in your body. That's bad, like really bad news. But here's the thing, it aggregates so slowly in the body that the FDA can still allow aspartame to be on the shelves and be on the market. Because the actual effect you get from formaldehyde takes so long, it's really hard to quantify what kind of impact it's having on somebody. So that means that you could be going all the way until you're 50, 60, 70 years old before you really have an issue with it, maybe, maybe even sooner. But that's the time when you should be paying the most attention to carcinogens and things that might be triggering a bad response in your body in the first place. So that's the main reason you wanna stay off the aspartame, all right? This one has the most evidence against it and it's really just not worth it because it's still pretty nasty. Now let's move in to Splenda, sucralose, okay? The yellow packets. Now by and large, sucralose is pretty close to sugar. It's really not that different. It's only a molecule off. It is chlorinated sucrose, meaning they add a chlorine molecule to sucrose to create sucralose, therefore making it 600 times sweeter than sugar. It's pretty darn powerful. You don't need much of it. But there was a study that came out not that long ago that turned the world upside down when it came down to Splenda. According to the Journal of Toxicology and Environmental Health, Splenda, or sucralose, kills your good bacteria by 50%, meaning it staves off 50% of the bacteria that's in your gut, that's helping you do things, that's helping regulate your digestion. Now, we could talk about all kinds of things chemical related, but when it comes down to affecting the gut biome, the thing that actually allows you to digest, the thing that actually helps you regulate your pH and your acidity level in your body and in your gut, now we're talking a whole different level of crazy, a whole different level of messed up. It's one thing to take a poison, it's another thing to take something that's actually changing your bacterial structure in your body. So if that's not enough for you, let me talk to the young guns in the room for a minute. Those that are looking to lean out, those that are looking to constantly lose as much body fat as possible. You think that Splenda might be helping you? Well, guess what? There's a lot of studies that are showing that it causes a spike in plasma glucose and a spike in insulin. Yep, so even though it's no calories, even though it's supposed to be the safest way to go, it's still gonna trigger an insulin response 
that is going to react like sugar in the body. It just might be a small amount. All right, now let's move into the weird little pink packets, saccharin. Saccharin, the stuff doesn't even taste good. Why are you using it? It's a derivative of coal tar, like literally tar. Literally, like the black stuff, like it's a derivative of that. And let me explain what's in it. So saccharin is made of anthranilic and nitrous acid, sulfur dioxide, chlorine, and ammonia. Okay, this sounds pretty natural, right? <laughs> Not. So flat out, we have a series of chemicals in there that are creating saccharin. Now saccharin has been around for a long time, so we really didn't think about studies until more recently. Well, there have been recent studies that have shown that it does affect your gut health just like Splenda does, not to the extreme of Splenda, but it also does some other things. It affects your liver in a pretty serious way when it comes down to inflammation. You see, it does this by stimulating the production of something known as tumor necrosis factor 1 alpha, TNF1A. That TNF1A is pretty powerful when it comes to signaling inflammation to go to a specific place, in this case, the liver. So not only do we have something that tastes terrible, We've got something that destroys your gut health, and it's also killing your liver and causing inflammation within the body. So I pretty much just killed off all three, right? Which one's the best, which one's the safest? Well, my honest opinion of those three poisons would probably be to go with Splenda, but you're still gonna end up having the gut health issue there, and it's definitely not gonna be good. But let me give you a couple alternatives. The first one is one that you probably expect me to talk about, and that's Stevia. Thing is, I'll be honest, Stevia has a little bit of a bitter taste, so you may not be into it. Stevia does something pretty interesting. You see, when it goes into your body, it converts into something that are known as glycosides. Those glycosides are processed pretty differently by the body. You see, they don't absorb. So it goes through your gut, and it just kind of sits there and passes on through. It's never fully absorbed, and it's never broken down, meaning you never have that blood glucose spike, and you never have the insulin spike. But then what happens is once it gets into the colon, it reacts with your gut bacteria and converts into something known as steviol. And steviol is very easily processed by the liver, just goes through the normal motions and then processed and excreted out your body. So stevia by and large is a pretty healthy one. Not a whole lot of damaging stuff going on, but it still is pretty new as far as research is concerned. And any time you're sort of tricking the body by taking something like stevia that's not gonna fully break down, there are a multitude of other things that come into play that we have to think about. Okay, but let's talk about monk fruit now. Monk fruit is one that people ask me about all the time, and quite honestly, it's becoming one of my favorites. It does have a couple of calories in it technically, because it's essentially a fruit extract. It comes from a melon that's exclusive to Southeast Asia, but it really works in a very unique way in the body, unlike anything else. You see, it contains these things called mogrosides, and these mogrosides are the magic of monk fruit. What the mogrosides do is not only provide a sweet flavor, they also help protect the insulin-secreting cells of the pancreas. So if you're someone that's diabetic, you're someone that's trying to wean off of sugar because you're having some insulin resistance or a little bit of an issue with your pancreas, well, monk fruit in and of itself can protect the cells in your pancreas and potentially even get them to start producing insulin again. Now, this hasn't been proven with a lot of studies yet, but we're starting to find that monk fruit, by and large, might be the way to go. Then lastly, it has some serious antimicrobial properties shown to fight off streptococcus and also shown to start fighting off candida. So if you're someone that has a sugar addiction and you need to fight not only the sugar addiction, but also the effects of eating years and years of sugar, well, monk fruit might be the way to go. So that's that. I've given you the poison. I've laid it out. Now you get to make the educated decision on which route you want to go. And I will tell you that at the end of the day, you're probably best off just getting yourself unaccustomed to sweet things. You don't need to constantly have that stimulus of sweet things in your mouth. It doesn't have to be like that. So if you want to keep consuming those pink packets, basically tar that tastes like tar, have at it. Denny's is open 24 hours. Keep it locked in here on my channel and leave a comment with what you want to see in the near future. I'll see you soon.